Once upon a time, before everything went to rack and ruin, the moon realm was ruled by a beautiful goddess. But then, Little Bear, for whom the moon goddess had shown nothing but love, stole two of his mistress's precious possessions. The black moonstone and a magic pair of scissors known as Calibrus. After declaring himself Moon Bear King, he invaded the goddess's castle, smashed the white moonstone to pieces. Once upon a time, I once upon a now. This is my moon cheese, so just get to the part where I sound good. <laughs> right, uh, yes, of course, <laughs> of course. Wasn't everyone so very wowed when the moon goddess was obliterated? Wasn't it just great that the impressive Moon Bear King uh, 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 gave a piece of the white moonstone to each of his generals, screwing over the moon at large? Oh yes, the next three years were something special. Ah, yes. Now, where do I begin? the Moon Realm's ruthless new king and intent to keep it that way. So night after night he spirited away the souls of children and locked them inside wooden puppets who were doomed to defend Castle Grizzlestad. And while tonight was no exception, it would prove to be quite exceptional. The poor dearie. Look, Ying Yang, another day, another soul. Poor indeed. You're as bad as the tyrant. How many of these children are you planning to parade off to certain mutilation before you realize you're wasting your time? Why, one more, and then another after that? As many as it takes me to get my hands on calibers. <laughs> Nice. Meet our hapless hero, who's just blitzed back to life, firmly in the Moon Bear King's clutches. Kutaro, Kutaro, your soul was summoned here at my behest. Kutaro, will you be my friend? Pals to the bitter end. <laughs> Lovely. Another dunce who left his head in the Moon Bear King's belly. Listen, you're going to drop dead if you go without a head. And I'll be the one stuck with cleanup. Come on, let's find something else you can use. A substitute head. Now, dearies, because lazy boys are the first to get turned into grubs. Come hither, my pretty. Alive from this ghastly heat. What? Three? What do you think? Meowed by my cat like reflexes? Oh! Where is the moon goddess? I demand to know where you have taken her! Oh, unhand me, you louts! How dare you! That peppy princess ought to pipe down! Are you the new boy? I suppose you want me to get your soul back so you can return home. Well, not until you march those wooden legs up to the Moon Bear King's throne room and fetch me his magic scissors. You can do it. After all, you are a very special boy. 
Jamu. <laughs> How many very special boys are we up to now? Yes. You can keep him company. whoop de doo We get to go to the throne room to find Calibrus. Won't this be fun? Magnificent Kutaro. There's the entrance to the throne room. No one has ever made it this far. Stop this madness! I command you in the name of the sun! If she's right, the sun does have a burning temper. Ha! What did he do? I've got his precious daughter. Uh, well, of course you do, sire. And even if you didn't, your majesticalness is more than enough to eclipse the sun. I've prepared a very special room for you. My dear princess, so please, I insist, take a long rest. Meow, what luck. He's left Calibras unattended for once. Kukaro, you are one lucky person. Before our hero towered the most impressive pair of scissors you've ever seen. The legendary Calibris. But Calibris was bound fast by vile vines, the twisted offspring of the Moon Bear King's twisted magic. Kutaro, meet Calibris. Calibris is a cut above your average scissors. He used to serve the Moon Goddess. Step forward, boy. Take your destiny now. Now that's a shock. <coughs> I mean, an honor. <laughs> Don't you see? Calibus has chosen you. And so Kutaro's fortunes were starting to look up. After all, he was now the proud owner of a pair of enchanted scissors. Still, it wasn't all good luck. Remember, Calibus belonged to the Moon Bear King. My traps! How did you get out? Wait, how did you get in? You wretch! What have you done to you through my throne room? Guards, apprehend that thief! Deftly and darkly, the grubs descended upon our trembling hero. But locked within each of them was the soul of a child, just as scared as him. Guards! Guards! Oh, I'll do it myself. Their king's nightmarish magical creations, weavers, were some of the nastiest. As the clash grew even clashier, the boy slipped, sliced, and sundered with the cold realization his life counted on it. Success! The fell weaver was no more. With the legendary Calibris firmly in hand, Kutaro had taken the first step of his grand adventure.
Unfortunately, the next steps had to be taken at a run, as the Savage King was hot on our heroes. Tiger! Uh, yes, sir. Where did that whelp go? Uh, well, he can't have gotten far, sire. He has such tiny legs. I imagine he's right around the corner. I don't want him around the corner. I want him cornered! <laughs> find that thief, or I'll find someone who can! <laughs> Please, sire, your blood pressure. I'll take care of it. Would you like a back rub? A glass of warm milk? Anything? No? Bravo, Kotaro. None of the others ever made it half as far. This will be music to the witch's ears. Oh, man up, would you please? Would you prefer the grubs find you and the moon bear king yanks your limbs off? <laughs> Lucky Kutaro, suckered into stealing a set of sorcerer's scissors by the witch and stirring up a tyrant's rage. Now, all his hopes of escaping the castle were dashed, just as he himself dashed like mad to outrun the soldier grubs who wanted his head. Poor Kutaro, his only hopes now were Canopus and a witch of most questionable character. What cruel tricks would fate play on him next? You, you pussy-footing wussy cat! Where were you? I ought to fudge! Run is it? Did you forget you sent us off in the first place? Yes, Calibrus chose him. Finally! Those legendary shears will cut right through the Moon Bear King's lackeys and set the Moon Realm free! Now, my brave young warrior, why don't you let Granny hold on to those for you? Right now, you wooden dolt! <laughs> Don't you tell me I'm not your type! Gotcha! To command Calibus, you need either a heart as pure as the goddesses, or which is magic like the Grizz. But all you've got is an attitude. Oh, oh nuts! You keep Calabras. You'll take good care of it for me. I smell you. That's the punch and stink of a scissor thief. Oh, General Tiger, sir. How kind of you to drop back to check on this little movie. <laughs> Anything about this to see, but if I see him, you'll be the first and last to miss And this egregiously foul odor must be witch stick. You are certain he's not here? Oh, yes, very certain, your antagonists. I beg you, bring that scoundrel to justice, or I may not sleep a week tonight. Ah, don't worry. My grubs will have this whole castle locked down in no time. Scratched up shield appeared before Kutaro. 
Could this be the power he sought? He's going to find the Knight's shield! How could he possibly know it was in there? Stop him! If Kukuro makes off with the shield, or the Sun Princess! Mark my growl! Blow! Rip that bit of Moonstone right out of your mouth! When I find that idiot who blabbed about the night in front of... Uh, you'll recall that even after the moon goddess was defeated and her legion was put to rout, her loyal subjects tried to resist. Four champions, ever faithful, rose to their mistress's cause. Over a period of weeks, they concocted an elaborate plan to lead a pathetically small but equally valiant army against the Moonbear King's castle, Grizzlestein. Did it work? Well... The bear shall pay the price for his crimes. They were hopelessly outnumbered, but so desperately did they fight, so bravely did they broil, that the tyrant himself finally deigned to confront them. You fight well, dare I say, skillfully. But alas, <laughs> that shield will not protect you from me! Coward! And that was the end of that revolt. The Moonbear King used his dark magic to lock the four champions' powers away, and all would-be challenges to his throne were wiped from the face of the moon. This shield was a special one indeed, for within it still dwelled the power of the moon goddess's knight, he whose valiant struggles ended in tragedy. Alas, poor knight, I knew him, Kutaro. This flashy shield of his got him farther than most, but when you're pitted against the king, uh, fear got the better of him, and you're looking at the rest of him. These scratches, courtesy of the Moon Bear King. Just look what's become of the Moon Sigil. But the Knight's honor carries the deepest gashes. He spent his final cowardly moments in disgrace. off. <laughs> At last, Kuturo had claimed the knight's powers. Sadly, not all the castle's puppets were having the same luck as Kutubo. Winken, Blinken, and Nordia tried to make a break for it. And got broken for their trouble. The Moonbear King's overblown guillotine was waiting to reduce all such traitors to scrap. Please, stay on your toes if you want to keep them. I didn't give you enough credit. You're, like, a hero or something, right? Questing to save the princess? 
Why else would you have Calibras and the Moon Knight's shield? Well, you're about three feet too short and three hours too late. But, thanks. Like, seriously. <laughs> I think we have an incident on our hands. is flashing, that's a piece of the Leon Stone. Without that bit of dental work, he'd be a scary cat and no better. Almost got him. Time for the big ass. You. Where's your mistress? Like, I gotta tell you, it's not like you're anybody special, am I right? Ah! Oh, that is It's the tyrant! Run for your life! Give me back my scissors! I'll chase you to the end of the moon! This world belongs to me now! You'll never be safe ever! long last, Kutaro and his new friend Picarina were free of Castle Grizzlestein, born to safety by the witch's magic. Our fugitives needed a safe place to hide, and so they chose Castle Waxwain, the same flying palace from which the moon goddess once ruled. In those better days, the White Castle was resplendent, a sight to behold. But the tides of darkness had since dulled its sparkle and loosened the stone of its walls and columns. There, there, sweeties. We'll just hide out here for a spell. But, like, this is Castle Waxwing. Doesn't it belong to... The goddess? Yes, indeed. Although palace and master alike seem to have come apart. At the scene... Silence, Ying-Yang! No one asked for your opinion! Out of the darkness and into the light, Kutaro had gone from Black Castle to White. No, oh, this is more like it. No moon bear king spies and lackeys to follow our every move. Uh-huh. You've got a lot of gumption, you know that? Only one hiney should be warming that throne, and it doesn't have a warts on it. The moon 
goddess is gone, dandelion. I'm sure the palace is delighted to have such a promising new master. Promising? Try pompous. Try shutting up! Oh, my little earth and savior, why you're nothing short of a hero? Come, be a good child and let me have a gander at that moonstone shard. Don't do it, Kataro. Calibris, the moonstone, and the palace all belong to the goddess. And this magic slinging loony is obviously trying to dupe you out of them. How can you say such a thing? All I want is what's best for Bob. What's his name? <laughs> Granny's trying to explain, so knock it off! Ow! Oh my gosh! What a witch! The moon bear king kidnapped Kotaro so while he was sleeping. He does that to Earth children, and that's where the moonstone comes in. The source of all moonlight. After the moon bear king shattered the stone, he gave the pieces to his generals. And you see how they shine. That's just one shot. Imagine the power I would have if you collected them all. I could easily spirit Kutaro back home to Earth. Really mean it? It's in your best interest too, my sweet. Didn't you say the Sun Princess was searching for the Moon Goddess? Yeah. Why? The Moonstone is a symbol of the Goddess's power. Restore the stone, restore the Goddess. This could be your big chance. <laughs> You should start in the Moonwood. General Rat has another Moonstone Shard, and you're going to get it back. I still don't trust you. You're using Kataro, and I am so going to prove it. You'll have to catch him first. Oops. Hey, Kataro! <laughs> and remember, you can tell a rat if you spell a rat. Go get him! Well, Kutaro had taken the Moon Witch Plunge, and now he found himself in a secluded grove in the Moonwood. That hag is such a... Ugh. How are we going to find one lousy rodent in this big? <laughs> I love this forest. One gullible woodland creature after the other. What's going on? A splash of purple later, and the quiet, unassuming grove had transformed into a gloomy, reeking landscape of evil, dark horribleness. Once I darkify the moonwood and offer it to the Moonbear King as a tribute, I will be on Easily Street. <laughs> So that's you did this, General Rat. Check out the cherry tree. And it's in full bloom. This is awesome. <laughs> Sakura, Sakura, dying far where you can see. <laughs> Darn that rat. He ruins everything. Before their very eyes, General Rat transformed the cherry tree into a baleful twist of briars. Thanks, Butterfly. You're the dreamiest. Now that Kutaro and Calibus had excised the darkness, the old cherry tree could go back to his usual agenda, standing tall, looking blooming or radiant. In the mystical cave behind the waterfall, our hero stumbled upon a strange scroll that could only be important. Gosh, that's the scroll of the Moon Ninja. I've seen it before. 
The ninja Picarina spoke of was one of the four champions who stole Castle Rittenstein in the goddess's Somebody name. Doesn't want to he, like the brave soul. knight, had challenged the Moonbear King and failed. And now only his power remained locked inside this blood-red And that was how Kuturo acquired the ninja's powers. The Moonwood Shrine! Time to spruce up the spruce! Whoa! Holy sacrilege! Oh, the horror! Rats squeaked for satisfaction at his handiwork. The hallowed shrine of the forest gods had been transformed, corrupted. into a weaver, one of the Moonbear King's faithful servants, who seemed quite intent that Kutaro joined the club. the children it held captive return to Earth. Calabras! No! My scissors! I don't want to go back to me! <sighs> What is going on? But this had better be important, or else. They what? Brett is supposed to be guarding that forest. Talk to him. Yes, he would say that. The buffoon. He and Tiger. I'm beginning to think the problem with my generals is that I have any! Hmm. hmm. But this week's a conspiracy. They steal Calibus. They escape my castle. Now they conveniently find the Moonwood. Do you think someone else is pulling the strings? Right. Keep a close eye on them. I shall take matters into my own claws. <laughs> Never fear, you beautiful brute. You just need to find their ringleader. And then, what you do, you can tear them into tiny and threatening little bats! Ah! Ah! Put toxin production on hold. Kutaro has been spotted in the moonwood. Then the rat has failed in his task. Say the word, sire, and I will strike your enemies down. Very well. Crash the life out of Kutaro, no matter the cost, and you will be well rewarded. The reward is in the crushing. Watch as I devour all that stands in my path. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.
Ever since the goddess had vanished from her throne, the denizens of the Moonwood had hardly slept a wink. But then they received a visitor. A single, smartly dressed rat. Gather round, the rat said, and produced a purple elixir. This tincture will cure all illnesses and stave off the tyrant's magic. And he offered to sell it to them for a reasonable price, as a neighborly gesture. The Moonwood's inhabitants were overjoyed and relieved to have such a good friend looking out for them. is a mess, all right. But where's General Rat? There's still no sign of him. At least it's nice here. Finally a place on the moon that's not crazy. Hey, Kataro, even if you clobber that rat and get the Moonstone Shard, you better not give it to the witch. I mean it. Seriously, that witch? She's just using you so she can get her grubby hands on the moonstone. Or worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, Daddy. Give me the moonstone. And your brains. Who knows what she'll do with that kind of power? You should leave the moonstone with me. I can keep it safe. What? You would a dare. That dip squeak is even more shaky than I am. Can it, Crone? No comments from the imaginary peanut gallery. Be honest, Kataro. Do you still not trust me? Because I think I could tell you something that might change your mind. Ready for this? My daddy is the sun. I know, it's like tragic. I'm a princess. I'm royalty. Then the Moon Bear King hits me with one lousy flash of magic. And suddenly, I'm just royally dirty. What? What's that look? I'm serious. I'm the Sun Princess. Princess. What? Princess. Hey! Princess. 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 Stop that! Princess. 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 of um, friendship renewed, Kutaro and Picarina, princess of the sun, continued their quest to find the shattered moonstone. <laughs> and now, the Lake Cedrus! Kutaro and Picarina were still hot on the rat's tail when they reached the edge of a dim and darksome lake. Oh, please, someone, anyone, help! Save me from my bloody game and mayday! Mayday! They heard the shrill cries of a damsel in distress. and contain high efficiency beauty. Beauty in every part. Oh, oh, she in your own kit? For real? At the heart of Lake Cedrus, Kutaro came across a great blob of poison. Surely this was what had fouled up the lake. Tragedy in the midst of unfolding. I hate to pick on the old trap, but aim for that brainless head <gasps> The rat spell? 
It's broken. Oh, at last, my former splendor will be restored. The next time something sounds too good to be true. Oh, you rat! Cut you! You vile servant of evil! Like the black death you came and blackened the hope in us all! And then you killed us! Um, you're kind of still alive, you know. Oh. What gives? Is Gloria off? I can't work with this hand. Whoa, 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 with me. Oh my gosh, this is mortifying. Come on, Kataro. Wait, wait, I'm not finished. The gods, the gods of the Moonwood, they are in danger. Drive us danger. Mom, you are doomed, doomed. The Moonwood's end is assured! <laughs> it's grievous, you ignoramus! Oh, that's it! Stop everything! Jeez, lady! Who flushed your muse down the toilet? <sighs> Curtain! Bill, get her out of here! I'll summarize for the audience! <clears throat> okay! So, basically... Me and Kitaro are the searching. Cedars! Oh. You must find Mother and Father Cedar at the center of the forest before! Shut up! Me and Kitaro have to save the Moonwood's guardian deity. Whose roots stretch oh. beneath the whole forest. Yes, who, oh, line, if Rat convinces them to drink this nefarious blood. Elixir! Wait, okay, we're done. Next scene. Yes, Kataro, they love you. Now walk! We are doomed. The forest shall rot. The birds shall chop their own obituaries. The cataclysm is upon us. It is to meet the one and only mother and father Cedar. Oh, aren't you polite and well spoken to? Make yourself at home. You're the talk of the forest, don't you know? They're all raving about that elixir. What's it you've got? Ah, yes, the elixir. It cures any ailment. <laughs> Somebody call 911! And now the moon work is gold! <laughs> Will no one get this grizzly goop off me? His treachery lay bare. Rat sprayed mother and father Cedar with a romantic violent groove. <laughs> threats to me. He said he would bite off my head if I did not corrupt the moonwood. I, I, 
I am meek and powerless and have no time to make you a bed. Oh, how sweet. The poor little rat. We never even considered him might be a victim to him. Rotten Moon Bear King. No respect for middle management. That's just, just our, our opinion. opinion. You, you don't, don't have, have to, to punish, punish the, the creature, creature on our behalf. Oh, what kindness! What mercy! Oh, I am touching deeply, truly. If you let me squeak by, I will give you whatever you ask. You need only name it. Well, how about that, you know, the Lixum McCormick that's supposed to help the missus's F.A.D. problem? Yes! The elixir! We've tried everything to cure my husband's pit odor. Nothing works. Just take a whiff. Then I've only got a surprise for you! Come on, wow! And welcome to the Rat Waste Shopping Channel! Whoa! What is going on? Mother and Father Cena! How would you like to be getting your hands on this Plum Miraculous here? Getting the stinky pits in old age? Never to wait. Well, uh, yeah, well, perhaps. Too much chunk in your trunk? Never to fear. Ooh. With just one gulp of Plum Miraculous here, you can kiss the problems goodbye. Ever wonder how the Moon Bear King got so strong? It's plum simple. Curious why the moon goddess was so beautiful? It's a plum secret. Guaranteed by the Mooney Mage administration or your money back. Oh. Oh, but it must cost a fortune. It does. But today is your lucky day. For a limited time, we're offering a 90-day free trial. It will not cost you the die. Not one dime. But you had better act now. This offer ends as soon as our program is over. Grab that phone today. Today. <laughs> Would you cut it out? By the way, Kutaro, maybe you could do me a favor. Do you think those scissors of yours could lop a few pounds off the missus? I said enough! General Snake's body coursed with venom, and the Moonstone's power had rendered a mere whiff of it, the deadliest substance in the solar system. But the Moon Bear King found such reckless power repugnant. The unlucky snake was locked beneath the black castle and forced to produce a toxic brew. How the serpent cursed his fate as he waited patiently for his chance to be free. Unfortunately for Kutaro, that horrible moment had arrived. Move, Snake! Obliterate the whole moonwood if you must! Just destroy Kutaro! Slithering scourges the moonwood! Kutaro, you have to stop that snake! Wait! Hold the horses! I am a bystanding innocent! After his narrow escape from the jaws of General Snake, Kutaro tumbled to a stop at the tip of the serpent's tail. Come on, Kutaro. Let's go rap on this reptile's head. Ugh, come on! Where is the stupid snake's head? All of a sudden, the stupid snake's head came into sight. Down the hatch.
match with Kutaro and Picarina and into the endless contorted bowels of the foul fiend. Well, we're alive, but look at all this toxin. One wrong step and ick. Intestines, gut to gullet. Kutaro had floated his way up Snake. They had just passed the creature's throat. It wouldn't be long now. Watching Kutaro's adventures through a magic mirror within the White Castle. That's a boy! I picked a winner, all right. You see that, Yin Yang? We're one piece closer. But the Moon Bear King had a mirror of his own and was, shall we say, enjoying the show considerably less. First tiger, then rat, now snake! How many generals does it take to lick this brat? Casey. Ah! First I am made snackery of, then I am made doormat. This Roland is most unpleased. Hmm. My liege, Moon Bear King. <laughs> Rat, where have you been? You betrayed me. Be 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 betrayed you? Perish the thoughts. I merely had to trick Kutaro to gain the upper paw. And, and once I had him in my sights, a pow, right on the kisser. Really? That is very bold of you. Come closer and tell me more. Yes, sir. I think you will be most impressed. Wait, sire. I... Cannot we put this all behind us? Well, you can't lie your way out of everything. With the snake's third piece of the moonstone in hand, Kutaro schlepped himself onward to the shores of a vast ocean, the Moonshine Sea. It was a dreadful realm full of pirates and monsters, and frothing up its waters at the moment was a roiling rivalry between Captain Gaff, pirate master of the Jolly Lamum, 
and generals pig and sheep who were vying for the captain's riches in the name of their king. Yo ho! Another fine haul, me old salt! Aye! The moon shines shady hours now! We'll not be cowed by pirate nor monster! And all thanks to the Moon Bear King's sparkly prize, you all. Check it out, Katara. Those are moonstone pieces. By the by, me happy hearty, have you seen the wanted posters? For that blagged Totoro. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> look at the reward. If we catch this swamp, we'll be swimming in swag. <laughs> Way anchor, smartly now. A vast pig. There's not a cent to be had if we can't find him. Think of the time we might waste. And the electric bell. <laughs> you be right again. We'll need one smashing scheme to catch him. <laughs> Shh. Keep it down. Arr. How dare you pour one without me, a scurvy bacon bit. First pig, first serve! Quick, Katara! Now's our chance! <laughs> Slowly, stealthily, he stole his way closer. The two generals were three sheets to the wind, but Kutaro could not risk waking them. The moonstone shards were just a few inches from his fingers when... The Moon Bear King will heap riches on us now! Our hero had fallen, quite literally, for a ruthless ruse. And now he found himself wriggling around in the darkness. From the briny smell and lurching floor, he knew he must be trapped inside a ship. Release me, you hornswogglers! Ha! Ah, not the larcenous barnacles I was expecting! Well, ha ha! Hoist high those chins, for ye have just liberated Captain Gaff himself! Ah. Kutaro spied a hook, that of the dread moon pirate, one of the goddess's four champions. What need of ye of that old relic? The lapdog whose arm it augmented was a disgrace of a pirate! A sorceress trick of the moon bear king. Only Calibrus can cut through, lass. Scissor me timbers, the real Calibrus. How did ye get out? We locked you in with a treasure. Aye, but a goddess intervened. Return me ship, or swim with the fishes. Oh, Never yeah. find his keeper. Oh, swine! After this, Kataro, we have to get to the moonstone shards first. The ship rocked, and seas churned as Gaff cornered the treacherous generals. Enough foreplay! I have, we should cut our lashes, pig! Raven curs! Our turn, Kataro! Prepare to die, Captain Goof! Suck on some sea water, you milk feeder! What? Uh, yeah. Try me for toys! No! I'm fast! These sea dogs! You knock me off! Work. And no 
Hugo Troy swab, but you've left me yearning for more. Bear, get off me, you putrid monster! to sink your booty! Begad, there seemed to be no heights to which this mad melee would not climb. He can't run forever! Whoa, 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 whoa. Got him! <laughs> Begad! Begoniers! Oh, we spring bones! <laughs> <laughs> so long! Keep running, you cowardly cold cuts! Kutaro was far from solid footing, and even the slightest jolt would send him splattering down forthwith upon the mildewed planks below. Careful! Watch your step! Over the barrel of laughs. <laughs> yeah, puns aside, Captain Gaff had had a field day with sheep. Enough swords had been run through the keg to make a pincushion blush. Ready to surrender? I can do this all day. You'll not live out the day. <laughs> What? We call for a little help. Ready? Aim! Fire! I didn't say fire! Get back here! Trouble had materialized on the horizon and was making Swiss cheese out of the Jolly Lemon sails. Holy ho! We could be next! Now, you scurvy chickens, be out of runway! <laughs> no! Pig! Ah! Pig! Stay with me! <laughs> you can't die without paying me back! Take out some life insurance! <laughs> Who's off me treasure, ye dog? Ye can settle your accounts in the next world! <laughs> Yo ho! So, we've a weaver on our hands. Kudro, me lad, I, I let you have the honor. You mean the hassle? And with that, Kutaro laid the weaver flag to rest, freeing the souls of countless children and rescuing the Jolly Lamon from the clutches of the cruel Moonbear King. Build sucking livestock. I'll see you to Davy Jones. But first, I'll have back me treasure along with me ship. Zoinks! We'll never give it back. Not even a piece of a piece of eight. Gold and silver be a heavy burden when you're sinking. <laughs> Captain Gaff's sword darted like lightning as he swashed pigs' buckles and fleeced sheep's finality. A burst! Me treasure! You raven doubloonatic! Uh, could we please avast forward to the part where you cough up your moonstone shards? 
Or never! We'd show to be shot, right? Ahoy! Moby! What the? Jeremy Timber! me beauty. When alas wants to submerge, Captain Gaff and the Jolly Lamb Ham are happy to oblige. Really? Oh, you're the best! It shouldn't take more than, say, three days. Ugh, you are so not the best. We'll do this the hard way. Deep breath, kiddo. Oh, man overboard! Again? And so, with the footprint of urgency firmly impressed upon his behind, Kutaro was off to the foul abyss of Davy Jones's locker to bring pig, sheep, and their vessel, the Moby, to justice. Down in the depths lived a plethora of mind-numbingly mystical creatures who happened to like their freedom. So, as you might imagine, they and the god of the sea didn't exactly crack open the champagne when the moon bear king took over. Well, the tyrant knew a pack of unruly sea monsters could be trouble, so he ordered General's pig and sheep to pollute the moonshine sea with magic oil. It transformed the sea god's servants into dastardly, greedy creatures that devoured everything in their path. As our brave little heroes dove deeper, they found themselves in a world of darkness where the water ran black and sunlight was a distant memory. What is up with this ocean? I'd say I've never seen anything so gross, if I could actually see. In time, the two arrived at an ancient and secret palace at the bottom of the sea. Within it dwelt the gargantuan god, whose strength had been all but sapped by the tyrant's horn. Where are we? Are you okay? Seriously, what is up? They're just up, they're just up in the underwater palace. Now 
get to work. <gasps> See if I join your musical number again. Kutobu, he is the hero of the moon. On his way to send the Kraken for his doom. But will he win to say it's not too soon? Subjects, uh, uh, I fear there is no hope. He seems pretty depressed, huh? Hey, squid dudes, are you gonna take us to where the kraken is? You are? Well, of course you are. Your lives are at stake. Let's book it, Kataro. <laughs> Pagan Sheep's goopy oil had done a number on the legendary Kraken, transforming him into a demonic butcher who chopped up the local marine life, gussied up their corpses, and then devoured their flesh raw. Oh, that's horrible! Completely immoral, I think. and seaweed green and every starfish orange. What rhymes with orange? Tried it rhymes with orange. It rhymes with everything. It rhymes with everything. Every creature stands in all before the sea goes on. And the hero of all the sails was in his Scissor wielding hero, thanks to you, the moonshine sea has regained its former splendor. 
You have my deepest gratitude. Thanks to you, thanks to you, I'll sing this back to Shut up, Kutaro. I would like to present you with a party gift. I have filled Calibus with a new power. One I am certain will make your journey easier. The god of the sea placed some of the trident's power in Calibus because he believed Kutaro could hew out a better future. But would he part the stormy seas of destiny or invite new storms of his own? Who needs catamarans or jet skis when you've got a ballistic squid? Kutaro had a new sense of purpose as he rocketed towards his enemy's stronghold, Crab Claw Cove. This hideout once belonged to Captain Gaff and his swarthy band of sea dogs. But just like his ship, it had been lost in the battle against the mighty Moby. The island's namesake, a claw-shaped rock at its peak, had just poked into view as Kutaro and Captain Gaff reunited for one last battle. And this time, the clincher was sure to be a pincher. deadlights on those smooth sands, those supple curves, those clammy crevasses. Look smart, me buckos! We're going in! Fine work, Kutaro! When it comes to impromptu bodies, I prefer a box of wedge. <laughs> All right, Fishy, let's see you outswim the jolly lamb ham. Where are the long toms? Trying to slip away, hey? Who's the depth charges? <laughs> if you want to sink that badly, Captain Gaff will gladly oblige. Release the charges! Zoinks! <laughs> Son of a biscuit eater! We're taking fire! Is Captain Airhead trying to blow us up too? Oh, get up, Katara! We're about to sleep with the fishes! Katara! Engine pressure rising! Begin manual ventilation. It's no use. We need to do it in the right order, or we're doomed. Ye swabs, you were sinking, and now you be falling out of the sky. I marvel at your spontaneity. I'll marvel you, you tricorn jerk. How could you wail on their ship like that when me and Kataro were still inside? <laughs> Watch my shit luck. <laughs> ah, this bodes ill, me hearties. Lady Luck has cheated, old cat. Why? What's the problem now? Crab Claw Cove be a night impenetrable fortress. The outer cliffs repel even the tallest ship, whilst the castle walls above deter the most able climber. And let's not even speak of the twisted trail that leads to the peak or the countless cannons to thwart our progress. Aye, we'll have a hard time extracting those scallywags now. I said nigh impenetrable, but Captain Gaff knows the ins and outs of his oldest mistress. <laughs> Observe. Now that's a big gun. I calls him Long Tom. He can reach so far up the island, she won't know what air. Now we're talking. Let's unload on that beach like there's no tomorrow. Kudaro, this be a two-man job. Kindly assume the position. Kutaro rocketed out of the cannon with a deafening roar and hurtled towards Crabclaw Cove at obscene speed. This is so not cool. Five. Four. 
three, two, one. Robocrab, are go! Enemy operatives have breached the CCC. Take Robocrab Mark 1 and eliminate them before it's too late. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wait, since when are they the good guys? Sorry, I sort of nerd out around robots. Okay, can we get on with it? How dare ye send her me precious robot! Now's my robot. chance to one up that squiffy and claim the reward for myself. <laughs> I'll tear ye limb from limb. How did ye block that, ye swamp? You think, Captain? Ah! Who has time for flowers in the sky? <laughs> when the flowers below be of such varicose beauty. Oh. Tis you that I wish to pluck tonight, oh. my amour. <laughs> and thus ends our tale of how the fetching moon witch and brave Captain Gaff found true love and lived happily ever after. The end. How dare you write an ending without me? This is my story! I'll curse you all! I'll teach you to make a fool of me! All of you! Especially you, Kutaro! I'll string you up if it's the last thing I do! It seems the Moon Bear King wasn't quite ready to live happily ever after. No, he still had lots of unhappiness to go round. Kutaro's journey led him westward to the moon's wild waste. General's bull and horse would be waiting on that the moon which had been plain. And speaking of plains, these were downright unwelcoming. Night never fell on the wild waste. Sunlight scorched the red earth and torched poor Kutaro as he battled the blistering wind. His wooden body crackled and snapped. He felt like a matchstick waiting to ignite. Soon he would go sunny side down. Kataro, straighten up. When Daddy gives people the look, he hates when you act all droopy. Now that they were on Route 66, it was bite the bullet or bite the big one. Kutaro felt the stare of unseen watchers, cacti who lacked eyes. Bleached skeletons with a bone to pick. Trees as petrified as he was. And disarmingly large monoliths. All were eager to add one perishable puppet to their ranks. Come on, wake up! You'll die if you don't keep moving! Kataro! Kataro! Hey, what's that? Kataro! It's a car! We got wheels! <laughs> See you on the finishing line! Oh, dream on, you cow! I'll teach you to look at a resource in the mouth! Oi! So make your moves, you dopey Jenny! Taxi! Oh my god! 
gosh, how rude! Wait a second. That was Bull and Horse! After them, Kataro! The two hot rodders had left the wild waste even wastier than before, carving a gruesome canyon deep in the earth and turning the cacti whacked up with one putrid blast of their dark exhaust. Well, shoot! So much for hitchhiking. <laughs> This one's in the bag! My bag more like! You know, the only thing worse than bad guys trying to kill you is bad guys that won't give me the time of day. All that remained was a single golden... Ah! It moved! The Moon Bear King's magic? Then this has to be... Within the skull was the soul of the wrestler, the last of the four champions of the world. You can't even touch me! I win! <laughs> the general's rampageous rivalry had reduced this small town smack in the middle of the waste to absolute shambles. But a new vaquero had moseyed into town. I win! No, I win! Frank was still my moment! It's my moment, you stupid cudsucker! Again, Bull and Horse had eluded Kutaro on the outskirts of town, and taking their place was a twin revolver touting gunslinger who looked eager for a duel at high noon. Dance, With the gunslinger properly wrangled and mangled, our hero continued his search for the general. locked with our heroes. The air was so heavy with foreboding you could cut it with a knife. So, horse face, kiss my second fly! Please, I can run circles around you eight days a week! <laughs> what has just happened? Katara! Would you believe Bull and Horse were once happily married? He was easy, she was breezy, and they cared for and cherished each other. Until, that is, they were given Moonstone shards, and well, trouble in paradise. Bull grew brawny and boastful, while Horse's gait and ego alike gained frightening momentum. Of all the Moon Bear King's generals, they could have been an unstoppable pair. But instead they felt a pity squabbling and name-calling. Meanwhile, Kutaro was still stinging from his treatment at the hands of Mr. and Mrs. Livestock. He knew sticks and stones could break his poor cup in bones, but he couldn't put a name to what he felt now. Those arrogant beasts hadn't even given him the time of day. He felt like a nobody, and that was tough medicine to swallow. Katara, what's wrong? You look blue. What's that on your face? Whoa, check this out! It's 
you, Kataro. Wanted, dead or alive, for the dastardly theft of Calibris and the Moonstone. Approach with extreme caution. Whoa! Look at the zeros on this bounty! Holy smokes! They're plastered all over the place! You must be famous. No, infamous. Now, what am I saying? Woolen Horse blew you off big time. Maybe if you were taller, or like, grew a mustache or something. Oh well, don't sweat it. Kataro, what's wrong? Hey, wait up! Was it something I said? Kutaro was on a mission now. His pride had been wounded, and beating the bull and horse was the only band. Look what you've done, you moor! I was seconds from winning! How dare you make me forfeit the race! I was about to beat this bovine! Oh, yeah? Well, now you can fight Kataro instead! <laughs> fight this pathetic pit squeak! <laughs> oh, maybe when he's out of diapers! What's the matter? Chicken? <laughs> what? Oh, what did you say? <laughs> Gonna run back to your chicken coop? How dare you call me a barnyard animal? <laughs> we barbarize you! First one to the train station wins! Whoa! Hey, wait just a darn second! You're supposed to duel, not race! What's wrong? Throwing in the towel? Why even try when you know you're going to lose? You're a loser, Kutaro! They should call you, I'm gonna lose, Taro! Wait, wait, my brother doesn't follow through, Taro! <laughs> Fine, if you want to race, we've got one condition. You have to wager your Moonstone shards. If Kataro takes first, you cough up the family jewel. My Moonstone shards? Hey, real tiny, I'm not that stupid. You should be honored just to gallop with the big girls. Oh, I see how it is. You're the one scared of losing. Guess you better pack it in now, you pack animal. Wouldn't want to take any chances. You might end up buying the farm. Oh. <laughs> Fine. The moonstone. You got yourself a deal, sister. But when this is over, I'm going to wipe that smirk right off your face. Kutaro is right on General Horse, right on her. He's in the straight, the post is in sight. Follow that coal smoke, kid. Ride like the wind, you're almost there. Go for home. You can do it. Kutaro, slash, slashes through the tender behind General Horse, derailing her. She throws the emergency brake as Kutaro overtakes her. First place, Kutaro. First place, Kutaro. Looks like the town's celebrating. Thank you! Thank you! <laughs> that was not a real victory. And if it was, it was over her! Not over me! After all the dismissals, Kutaro had finally gotten the horse to throw down and in the fence. I'm gonna snort you to Kingdom Come! See ya, friends! Missiles locked! 
Angel's work. You may have defeated horse, but I'm still no. Look out! Run! No. 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 I challenge you to a duel in the Colosseum. Kutaro and Picarina hurtled into the sky and far, far away. The Far away they flew. Kutaro and Picarina flew far. No! And they landed. <coughs> they landed. No! Down land already. Oh, hey. Wow. I'm okay. Kutaro, you got all your parts? Come on, quit messing around. Look at this place. Like, where are we? I mean, ¿dónde estamos? The answer, as it turned out, was south of the border, loco caliente. Posters promoting our protagonist's punch fest against the prevailing persona were plastered around the Colosseum premises, which were packed with patrons. Who would emerge victorious? Challenger or champion? The wages were flying as the stadium seating grew rowdy with drink and dance and song. Defeat Kutaro! Hmm. Yes, of course, he won. And you're sure he'll win? He had better. Make sure our fail safe is in place. Good. Yes, 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 monkey. I have your bananas. Now go! <laughs> Corner, you know the champ. You will love good goddess almighty. A brutal ambush. Business is about to pick up. Wham! Kutaro is sucking air. <laughs> Fight! Getting my rock rock gig. <laughs> okay, this is done. Let's be 
horse had trampled Kutaro's pride, but now all that was forgotten. His honor restored. <laughs> Good news, sire! Kutaro's force has grown strong. Strong enough to defeat a whole mountain of bull! Kutaro's. What? Have you caught a cold? Speak in full voice! Never fear! We are still one move ahead in the game of evil. Kutaro's doom is assured, Moonbear King. <laughs> yes, a tidal wave of cheering washed over Kutaro, and so deafening was the roar that he failed to hear the crack as Monkey hatched a plan. A short time ago, in a galaxy far from far away, with the power of Calibris and the might of the four champions, Kutaro had won victory after victory against the vicious Moonbear King. More than half the moon had been freed, and the noose was tightening around the tyrant as his moonstone shards were taken and his advantage slipped away. Kutaro's deeds of daring do had become a beacon of hope, and the beleaguered peoples of the moon were on the brink of rebellion. The flimsy soul of a selfish boy had become the adamantine soul of a hero. Kutaro, may the forceps, <coughs> I mean scissors, be with you. Kutaro and Picarina were winding their way back to the wild waste when they got lost in a dense forest. And as dark clouds settled in overhead, our duo found themselves longing more and more for the light of the sun. Alas, neither one of them had the foggiest idea from whence they came. Ah! Kutaro, you're not supposed to chicken out. You're the hero of the moon, the big chief. You took that bull by the horns and won, right, champ? Surely Kutaro was strong enough to wrangle a couple of trees. Look, you've got a moon to save and a sun princess to please. So man up, kiddo! As if he had a choice. The only road was forward, or whatever direction they were facing, so our hero steeled himself and pressed on. The pale blue light of the earth, his only guide. Head! 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 Gee, thanks! I'm fine with crows, but don't scare me out with bridges! Oh, that's nice. But if you really want to thank us, Tell us where the heck we are. Pardon? Oh, well, you're all uh, on the outskirts of Halloweenville. Cozy place two of the Moon Bear King's generals come along and did stuff to the local pumpkins. Did stuff? That's right. They made it so snacks sprout all over them. Huh. That explains the candy and cookie trees. Oh, I hope you didn't all eat them, because the townsfolk that did all turned into hunger monsters. Just desserts, you might say. <laughs> what was that? Wolves? Ha! Try dogs. General Dog. He's all that stops us from running for the hills. Whoa. Come on, Kataro. Let's whip that puppy and take his moonstone shard. Just outside the bosk, General Dog stood up like some great Stygian hound. You are firewood. So this is General Dog. Uh huh. Wait a second. He's on a leash. Uh, what leash? You know, maybe we should just ignore him. Yeah, let's go. Woo, woo, woo. Wait, don't go. Do you mind? We're in a hurry. Woo. All I want 
goo is for that nasty moon bear king woo, woo. to scratch my ears. Ah, uh, scratch this. Woo, woo, woo. Are we playing? Oh my gosh. Come on, Kataro. Woo, woo, woo. Please, just for a minute. No way. Woo, woo. Look at me. You know, I think I'm a cat person. Woo. I have big and strong if you beat me, you can have my moonstone piece. <laughs> We'd get that anyway. I know you love me. Uh, let me count the ways. Oh boy, she does. Could this quite possibly be the dumbest animal I've ever seen? What do you say, Katara? Should we throw him a bone? I love bones. I think it's safe to say his brain's his weak point. Give him a thwomp! Woo, woo, woo! Sugary sucker punch to the appetite. Their eyes started at the fluffy whipped cream snow on the milk chocolate shingles and wandered longingly down crispy, crunchy cookie walls until they found the sticky temptation of the candy windows. Their minds were still toying with thoughts of macaroon molding and Baumkuchen banisters when their eyes wisely decided to shut up and let them smell the darn thing. Oh my gosh, yummy! Do you think they would mind if we took a bite? We haven't eaten in, like, minutes. No, no, no. We must not eat delicious house. We need to get the moonstone. <laughs> I have you. What's that? It was a trap. Our champ had stopped to chomp just long enough for the chimp to make a chomp on him. Behold, Halloween Veal, where every ghost worth his sheet loved a good scare. If you manage to spook someone out of their treats, then by George, you've done your job. However, that was before the moon goddess vanished and sly General Monkey played a real trick on Halloween Veal. He ousted the town's mayor and the ghastly mayoral family from their haunted house, converted the building into a laboratory, and once settled in, Monkey began doing things to the town's produce. See now the awesome scrumptious tastiness of monkey's pumpkin creations. The first bite is heaven, but then the cookie crumbles. <laughs> the moonstone shards are back in our clutches. The moon bear king will be most pleased. Uh, you'll pay for this. Uh, give those back. Wait, I would be mad to give up this kind of power. <laughs> Think of the experiments I could come back. Not while I'm around. <laughs> Round indeed! I, monkey, shall use these moonstone pieces in my experiments! Now make like a banana and peel! You creep! Nobody cracks jokes like that on lives! I'll get you! Just as soon as I can find my toes. Oh, ouch! Now that is perfect! <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, you poor plump dears. What a shame on you for stuffing your piggy little faces. You can yell at us later. That ape ran off with our moonstone shark. This is horrible. Those stones have the power to restore magic and memory. But now you've messed everything up. Cotero, you are a special boy. Especially stupid. Stop lecturing us. Change us back to normal if you want our help. Oh, but magic can only undo magic. You may have been charmed into eating those sweets, but the sweets themselves were no smell. You pick out, you get fat. That's just nature. Wait, what does that mean? You can't fix us? We'll be chubs forever? I said magic can't fix you, dummy. You got yourself fat, now get yourself thin. But it can't be that easy. Oh, nothing is ever easy. And I'm gonna make sure this is a. Big sweating porky, time's a wasting. Oh, all I need is the moonstone and Calibrus. It's all I need. You know, you could just give up and stay an ugly, pathetic witch forever. Yin Yang! <laughs> Which is the one pulling the strings? This awesomely juicy morsel should come in handy. <laughs> General Monkey's tasty trap had turned our poor hero into the Lord of Lard. the end of his pot-bellied, uh, stout-hearted slong through self-imposed emaciation, Kuturo had wandered right into Halloween veal. Oh, this is much better. I can see- Give me candy, or die. Um, I don't think that's how Halloween works. Artists, Kuturo and Picarina avoided almost certain passion. Oh, you yet! Another cavity! Let's finish the job! You ruined everything! What? Hey! Whoa! If we hadn't busted you out of there, you'd be spending the rest of your days as a pumpkin monster. What is a pumpkin but a manifestation of the predictability of everyday life? My soul will never be free. That's crazy talk. We just freed you big time. Ah! I am Nebula. Nebula Oblongata, the existential wanderer of the cosmos of the soul. And yet, Prisoner of the fleshy coils of my impending adolescence. You're a ghost? <laughs> so is everyone in Halloween. People insist I am the mayor's daughter, but they are deceived by illusion. They do not realize I am a ray of blazing light in a galaxy of darkness, cast out by the gods and saddled with this cage, you ordinary fools would call a body. Um. You're the mayor's daughter. Maybe you've seen this guy, this monkey guy? He totally swiped our goods and we want him back. Yes, the simian is conducting experiments in a haunted house in the center of town. The place I called my literal home. Well, Kitaro, let's go. Wait! What? Ugh, don't do that! General Monkey 
has transmogrified the haunted house into a laboratory. It is a fell crucible of tin and iron, a portentous labyrinth of tubes and tinctures. To set foot inside would be to bring down the hammer of your own doom. Unless, of course, you enter through the unspeakable door. Unspeakable? You just spoke it. So, I take it you know where the door is? Yes, it was my literal home. Then could you, uh, show us? Impossible. Monkey stole my key to the unspeakable door. Of course he did. But not the mayor's. Okay, great. So where's the mayor? In the one place where the haggard robes of mortality can be shrugged aside. Upon the golden bridge that separates life from death. Right. And translation? The graveyard. Before his stint as a scientist, General Monkey was a brilliant mime who made everyone laugh. But being laughed at always rubbed him the wrong way. Determined to better himself, he studied hard and used his evil inventions to get in the Moon Bear King's good graces. His piece of the Moonstone made him the smartest creature around. Smart enough to build Castle Grizzlestein, and smart enough to turn Halloween Beetle's pumpkins into wickedly tempting snacks. Now, within his laboratory in the haunted house, he was combining Kutaro's seven Moonstone shards with the one that General Dog already had to create an abomination unlike any the moon had ever seen. You know, moon folk used to flock to Halloween Veal just for the thrill of it. Of course, once the Moon Bear King rose to power and real terror took hold, tourism took a nasty, nasty plunge. The ghost town turned into a, well, you know. Huh? You see? This place isn't so scary. Now, how exactly are we supposed to get in? Oh, mister? Hey, mister? Could you unlock the gate for us? It's open. Here they were, in the scariest corner of the scariest part of the moon. Fortunately, not even the most horrible of deaths could deter brave Kutaro from his search for the mayor. After you! Yes, Kutaro mustered all his courage and faced the dangers ahead. <clears throat> I said, Kutaro summoned all his courage because if he didn't find the mayor and get the key to the haunted mansion, the Moonstone Shards would be lost forever. Clearly, Kutaro needed a little persuasion. Oh, get your hiney in gear, you chicken! Swelling overhead, swooped down and transformed into a horrible weaver. With a macabre monster vanquished and the graveyard conquered, Kutaro was ready to continue his search for the mayor and the key to enter. Missed you, Susan. Don't call me that. My name is Nebula. Silly girl. Daddy knows what he named you. Susan's a wonderful name. No, Susan is so plebeian. You can call this earthly vessel, but you can never name my soul. My 
My name is Nebula, Nebula of Langada, Wanderer of the Cosmos. <laughs> I think we need to look into cancelling your library card. Susan! Susan! Stop it! Kutaro's efforts had galvanized the ghosts of Halloween Veal, and now they rose as one. Armed with torches, they closed in on the haunted house, determined to have the monkey's head. Kill the monkey! Smash his head! Drink his blood! to us now. Let's go, Kataro! And so our Kutaro was left to face Monkey's machinations alone. He's not alone. Kutaro sliced and diced the Atlas building until it was hardly recognized. Walls tumbled and columns crumbled until finally the mayor's... <coughs> Correction. The evil Monkey's abode had been demolished. Monkey's gotta be in here. I can feel it. Show yourself, monkey! Give us back those moonstone shards you stole! <laughs> but they are right in front of you, my dear! What? <laughs> you will help me test my new bodacious experiment! General Robodog! Destroy Kutaro! <laughs> Acknowledged. Battery and this melted. This general dog? What happened to him? Go, go, robo dog. General Bucky has augmented all of my primary function dist- <laughs> Energy low. Flight disabled. Finish him. We need all those moves. had been tamed, and Kutaro was one moonstone shard richer, but Monkey had slipped right through their fingers again. As for the consequences, well, how could Kutaro know? He was just a puppet, not the one pulling the strings. Thanks to Kutaro, the shattered white moonstone was coming together piece by piece. Meanwhile, the witch, Esma Potts, who apparently had no qualms about holing up in another person's house, stood before Castle Waxwain's towering portrait of the moon goddess and said, Just you wait! Soon I will be the goddess! And the smile playing on her hideous lips gave way to a chilling laugh. Place yourself. You're my lord at once. <laughs> How could you fail me? You, of all my generals. Your mistakes have cost me the other hand. If he gets the rest of the white moonstone, and he has Calibras. No, oh, wait. I know who it is. Only Gudaro's three. But who? Tell me. 
brave and I'm the moon witch. Is my boots. Parts. The hag from the kitchen. She is at the White Castle, guiding Kudaro from there. That's what she thinks. I'll destroy them both. Puppet and puppeteer. But how, sire? Simple. The clock tower in the land of time. Pick up, you useless pups! What are you waiting for? Yes, sir! <laughs> Nothing like a spot of Copernican Artemisia to pass the afternoon. Yes, I can't tell whether it's the smooth herbaceous flavor or the distinctive biscuity nose, but something about it does tickle my fancy. Who calls during tea time? No manners at all. Oh, uh, please, excuse me. A rabbit and rooster's never-ending tea party? Say again? Moon barking? <gasps> Sire, Lord Master, yes, hello. I have a cue of the chicken taken over the land of time. That clock should have been fixed ages ago. <laughs> My world, Tempest Fugit. <laughs> Has it been three years? Time is running out, and you were supposed to catch it! <laughs> Never you fear your ISness, it is under control! That's right! We'll have that chronopoly for you in a macro jiffy! Move it! I want that clock to go on me right now! Oh, la 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 la! <laughs> Late, late, I am late. He looks shady. Let's tail him. The land of time, an old and well-established observatory, where time was closely watched, a calendar devised, and the stars slid around to make it all work. Gravit magnetational temporal spatial anomaly. Yes, this all seems correct. And right on schedule. Un, deux, trois, et voilà! Whoa! Into the wormhole and on to the Alcyon past. was a bit funny in here, but General Rabbit's highway of playing cards let him quite literally pass the hours. Hey, why are you stalking me? Don't play dumb. We're gonna beat you up and take back your Moonstone Shard. Follow that rabbit! The wait is over. Monsieur Lapin's magic show is about to begin. First, flip a card. Any card. Next up. Wait, no. Where is it? Last it. Ah. Am I out of tricks? Fine. You leave me no choice, Gladius Auriculus. Yeah. Time to disappear, you pets. <gasps> My magic hat. Wait, 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 wait. Time out. Stop. Shot.
gods, the Moonstone will soon be complete. Completely mine! And once I'm the goddess, this palace and all the moons shall obey my every command! Now, oh dear, the witch has finally cracked. Aha! Me buxom beauty Esma pots. How ye shiver me timbers when you dance like that. Maybe we Whoa. all have. <laughs> Find those last pieces, I'll fat her side you suffer and make room for me! <laughs> is complete without a clock tower, and the moon is no exception. But the hands of this clock are not used to tell time. They are used to shape children's dreams. Light and dark decide if it's a quarter to a nightmare, or half past a daydream, or ten till a rude awakening. To keep a stern watch over the clock, the moon goddess had chosen Mr. Pink. But that was before. When the white moonstone shattered, the clock spun into madness, and Mr. Pink went missing. To bear or not to bear? Who is she, this witch who's after my moonstone? Why does she oppose me? She didn't have to steal Calibrus. She didn't have to pick on me like this. It's not fair. This is my Moosey's. Nobody else can have it. Not that mean witch, that awful hag. Whoever she is, she's mean and, and I hate her. Have I seen her somewhere? Yes, that would explain it. Who is she? Where have I met her before? Wait. Yes. Mika. Of course. You're done, Hag. Checkmate. <laughs> Katara, look out! These cards are about to fall! Cushioning Kutaro's fall was a strange garden constructed like a maze. Primly precise hedges were prankishly preventing Kutaro's progression. Of course, Kutaro had prudently come pre-equipped with the proper pruners. Really, I hope you're happy with yourself. I went through all that trouble to hide myself, but what's the point exactly? If you're going to march into my garden and mercilessly slip away at my disguise, I might as well be wearing a lampshade. I mean, I probably itch less, not that you care. If the Moon Bear King uses me to stop that clock, we're all... We're all... And for once, Mr. Pink was at a loss for words. The last guardian of the clock tower was in Rooster's clutches, and the Moon Bear King, Kutaro, dashed through the verdant labyrinth, determined to free Mr. Pink from the <laughs> diabolical General Rooster. After a long clamber, Kutaro had finally reached the top of the clock tower. Hey! Sit up, hero! I'm up here! He's been turned into a clock hand! Save me, please! Before the clock strikes twelve! Your time is up, Kutaro! Soon this world will be plunged into eternal starkers! I hope you mean eternal darkness. Don't you cowardly chicken! <laughs> Pieces. 
He's on the ropes! Ah, beautiful plumage! I'll make a rotisserie out of you! Look out, lad! Destroy his wing! Marvelous and timely hit! Hurry! Time is running out! Dreamtime lurched into its darkest, most terrifying hour. Kotaro, look! The Earth! <laughs> you see, Kotaro! Now, children in everywhere will be locked in an inescapable nightmare! Their souls will be ripe for the harvest! They will make my master invincible! <laughs> Dragon! Come forth! Open the gateway to Earth! Bring me those children's souls. Kutaro's victory over Rooster felt empty. We should have known Monkey wouldn't play fair. And now that the damage was done, he was powerless to stop the long night to come. Even in the land of time, there was no changing the past. Dragon had been called forth from his celestial roost to bring judgment down upon all who dared to defy his ruthless master. And it was none other than Dragon who spirited away the souls of children each night on the tyrant's behalf. That's right, Dragon was part of the reason Kutaro got dragged into this mess in the first place. But now, the stakes were much higher. The souls of every last boy and girl on Earth. Having parted the heavens and opened a portal to Earth, Dragon set to work, harvesting the souls of children from the coils of their nightmares. Dragon! Bring me those souls right now! If the Moon Bear King devours all those, we'll have a disaster on our hands! Not only will I not rule the Moon, he'll rule the whole dark universe! Come on, Kutaro! Hop to it! Stop that monster! Whoosh! Kutaro watched Dragon soar off with a host of children's souls in his wake. Karina at his side, Kutaro hopped astride the newly emancipated Mr. Pink and raced after General Dragon. By some miracle, they caught up. We have to stop him, no matter what! Surgery did the proud and powerful dragon finally did give you him a seriously sign of just cut off my tail? Tell me you didn't just cut off my tail because that is just don't even make me spell out the dookie you're in right now. Watch the right, slap him, Kadaro. Let's see 
if those scissors you used against my pals can smoke a dragon. Die! Ah! Oh, so you want some juice? That what you want? Add some of this! What? Hold still, Pep Squid! You, you fight good! But I ain't giving up my piece of the boss's moonstone! Not to nobody! You can kiss the earth! And your little adventure! Goodbye! Hold it right there! I've had enough of your bullying and that stupid accent! Don't you make me go full Picarina on you! Kotaro, you may be from Earth, but you're our hero! I know you can win! You can beat him! Let's settle this like men! The Dragon Man, bring it on! You got me. Epic battle, the wicked dragon has been slain, and the souls of the children were free once again. Katoro, another piece of the puzzle! <laughs> Just one more card! And Monkey's business is no match for ours. Hey! Wait just a solar second! We beat Dragon, what gives? You're too late! All you did was ensure the gateway between the Earth and Moon stays open! Now, I need only wait. <laughs> Soon, the Moon Bear King would possess a more terrible power than ever. But Katara risked everything to stop the dragon. It can't have been for nothing. No, it's too soon to give up. We've still got the Moon Goddess. If we put the Moonstone back together, we can bring her back too. And with her on our side, that half-baked grizzly is toast. We've got to stay positive. Let's go find Monkey and make him cough up that last piece. That's right. You'll get your goddess. Now would you just hurry up? Goddess or no goddess, the tyrant's too strong now. If we get the Moonstone back, Mew should send Putaro home where he belongs. Don't be crazy. Why would I ever do that? Kutaro is our last hope, especially mine. <laughs> Stuck that warty nose of yours in my business for the last time! <laughs> Yowzers, this is terrible. With the dragon down and one moonstone shard to go, Kutura was certainly on a run. But with the witch in the tyrant's clutches and the power of countless souls at stake, it seemed the rolling would be uphill from here on out. <laughs> Hot on General Monkey's heels, Kutaro and Picarina stumbled into a steep, snowy mess of peaks called the Mean Moon Mountains. The last Moonstone Shard was all Kutaro needed to free his soul from its puppet prison and return to his home down on Earth. But our hero remained troubled as he climbed. He knew General Dragon and that clock had given the Moon Bear King control over every last child's soul. As Jack Frost nipped at the boy's fingers and toes, a cold and unshakable suspicion was starting to tug at his heart. Wait, Your Highness, this is one terrible mistake! <laughs> Can I your fur looks especially lustrous today? Spare me the theatrics. I know exactly who you are. Uh, let's get you! 
glimpse of Kotaro, General Monkey ran as fast as his legs would take him. You will never catch me! Designed to hide the secret rocket. I mean, what self-respecting map? But gravity was no match for Kutaro as he sheared through the stratosphere and up into outer space. Well, that's all she wrote. We're stuck here forever. This looks like fun. Can I play? Do we look like we're playing? Wait, Ying Yang, how'd you get up here? Forget that. The witch has been snatched by the Moon Bear King. You have to save her. Save her? <laughs> You're kidding, right? Why would we? She was gunning for the Moonstone right from the start. At least now, she won't get in the way of reviving the goddess and sending Kataro home. You know, I think you're missing the litter box for the droppings. Hey, we've got two things to worry about. An ugly monkey and the Moon Stone. Is the witch on that list? No! Now help us! Fine, but hurry up and choose your transportation. You've got a monkey to pursue. All right. gets hard, Catherine. Remember that. Cut yourself a break. Keep it real, Sagittarius. Cause he's about to fall for your arrows. With <laughs> the It's all over, monkey. Now, where did I leave off? All right, Taurus. We're done. Pixie, 
Don't worry, I love you all the same. It was the moon bear. Bad monkey! He cast a spell? I told you to let the moon work out its own kinks! But did you listen? Okay, no, but I was I worried about you. the moon goddess. She's always been no. so sweet to me, you know? Yes, well, she had it coming. I warned her, beware the dark side of the moon! Never turn your back on the shadows! But no, I want to balance. Light and dark and equal shares. Yeah, that works. But Daddy, me and Kataro have worked so hard to find the Moonstone Shard. Galactic issues, sweetie. Not fair to pin it on one kid. I know, I know. Tell you what. I'll go have a word with this moon bear. Rough him up a little, then save the goddess. How's that? Sound good? Oh, Daddy, that would be solar. Yeah! <laughs> Daddy? We'll find another moon, honey. You're <laughs> no help. Fine, we'll take care of it. Come on, Kataro. So, you found courage. Kuturo and Picarina descended from the brilliant center of the galaxy to once again face the dark terrors of the moon. Well, Kuturo's relunization kicked off with a horrific sight. The beautiful Castle Waxwain had been bound curtain and keep by Castle Grizzlestein's vile vines, anchored to the moon like a swan in the death squeeze of a thousand vipers. Even now, an army of grubs was making ready to storm the goddess's Argent Palace and bring it down. Thanks to their convenient solar staircase, Kutaro and Picarina were back on moon soil. Oh no! The White Castle! They won't be able to hold out much longer! We need to revive the goddess, like, right now! So, uh, any ideas? You think we need some kind of lunar super glue? The only thing I like better than power is more power! <laughs> Not even the sun can touch me now! But it's not enough. I need more. Give me all the power! Kutaro! You have to <laughs> Are you two all right? Yin Yang! Did you procure the last Moonstone Shard? Of course. But I wish these things came with an instruction manual. What for? It'd be written in your language anyway. Just get to the palace before it collapses. It's our only hope. The moment of truth was upon them. Would they manage to unhumpty dumptify the moonstone? And would the goddess really return to them if they Kutaro and Picarina had reached the roots of the vile vines entangling the White Castle. We're just going to have to trust Ying Yang and get inside the White Castle. Cut a path up along that gap coming out of the vines. The duo climbed as fast as they could. They had to reach Waxwain before it collapsed. At last, Kutaro had reached the base of the White Castle. But how much castle was left? The vile vines had wormed their way deep into the halls of Waxway. There wasn't much time. Just make a break for the top! We have to put the Moonstone back together! If the lady in green wishes to dance, allow me to cut it! Ha! 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 Uh, and turn! No! Sweep her off her feet! Ha! Fair winds, me lad! Right, moving on. I think we found our problem. Let's go and take it down!
traced the vile lines to their roots at the heart of the castle. Uh, this is just plain nasty. Things botanical have been vanquished by Critteray. The Moonstone's big moment is just a Despite the Moon Bear King's countless schemes, the Moonstone was about to be made whole again. Katara! <sighs> White Moonstone's pure light was restored, and it rained down upon the moon as power surged back into Castle Waxway, and there was hope. What's happening to me? Nikutaro, finally! Wait! I remember now! It's me! I am me! My lovely little bear, I have returned, and your machinations must be stopped! The balance must be restored. You wish. Ah! Let me out of here! No! I command it! <laughs> mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the toughest guy of all? You know who the strongest is. Kutaro! <laughs> <laughs> ah, fate. As the forces of light and darkness said Marco, what could the moon say but Polo? The bitter struggle for power between the shimmering castle Waxwain and the shadowy castle Grizzlestein had reached a healthy boil. Hero and Tyrant would soon have their final showdown. At stake were not just one boy's fate, but the fate of the whole moon, and the earth, and the sun, and galaxy, and... Well, let's just say he better not mess up. Now it just so happens, Kutaro and Picaruna weren't the only ones who had refused to give up on the White Castle. A battle be brewing, me hearties! Man the long toms! Raise those mizzen masts! Look alive, me buckos! There be no getting the Davies now! Aim for the Black Castle! Where be my coxswain? Ying yang Faster! Put you back in it! Hi, hi, Captain. Some beauty Esma Potts has need of her able seamen. Fire! Fire! Thanks to Kutaro, the White Castle had been restored. And now the stage was set for their epic clash with Castle Grizzlestein. Blimey, that firepower! Kutaro, me lad! Why haven't you stormed the enemy vessel? <laughs> you're the pirate! Ugh, alright, fine, we'll do it, since you're obviously not gonna. Handsomely no! <laughs> Trajectory locked! Fire! Time to celebrate. Trajectory lock! Fire! And off our hero glasses toward his grisly, grizzly target. Asthma yes! pots, me sweet! See how me cannons blast for the heat! Stupid castle! Patience, 
Vengeance, lad! Kudaro will save ye! Bye! Save your own dang witch! Ah! Why Between Castle Waxwain's fusillades and Kuzuro's own efforts, the Black Castle had finally screeched to a halt. Its ramparts ruptured and bailies blazed, and the victors' cheering echoed through its dying hall. Whoa! But hold on! The Moonbear King is still in there! We have to finish him off or the children will never get their souls back! And Taro, neither will you! So you destroyed my castle. Big deal. Who needs a castle when I am already invincible? Poor oh, little bear. You are in no position to pity me. I am all powerful. And what does that achieve? It won't fill the emptiness in your heart. You have no friends you trust, no family to love, no subjects who love you back. You're still just the lonely little bear you've always been. Power changes nothing. I don't need love. My subjects and soldiers, and the people of the moon and the children of the earth, serve just one purpose. To feed my hunger. Kutaro had done a lot of growing up during his journey, but the tyrant had just one-upped him in a big way. And unfortunately, it is mathematically proven that nastiness is directly proportional to body mass. Once again, the Moonbear King loomed before our hero. His sheer size alone put small mountains to shame. I'll devour the whole moon! If that's what it takes to get rid of you, worms! How are we supposed to face him like this? Oh! Why? Is 
my pots is really the moon goddess. Didn't we go over this? <gasps> no, you made you feel like we didn't. Well, it's your fault for not asking. When the moonstone was shattered, my memories and powers were jumbled and I was transformed. Captain Gaff, I shall never forget your kind attentions. Soften me, Timber! The one perfect beauty in this hideous world! Gone! Ha <laughs> ha! All be done! I'm not done with you yet. I don't need a power. What are you doing? Uh, what's the meaning of this? I want to be my friend. <laughs> really? Kotaro, get the Black Moonstone from Little Bear. We have to set things right again. Little Bear, that power is too much for you. Give it back. But without this, I'm nothing. I... I'd just be me. Would you still be my friend? Pals to the bitter end. Oh, Kotaro. And so the two Moonstones were joined together, light and shadow waxing and waning in balance, the way the night sky had always meant them to. Don't fret, one little head. You have grown to a hundred times the boy you used to be. So big is your soul that your old head would hardly fit. Quite right. <laughs> uh, Kutaro, how will we stay friends if you're going far, far away? Hush now, little bear. You have a friendship, and that is a ship that can sail anywhere. Once tight, always tight. <laughs> um, We'll always be friends, even the goddess. <laughs> really? I must remain impartial. I suppose she'd rather consort with stuffed animals in her magic castle. Poor thing. I heard that. And so Kutaro's journey to save the moon came to a grand and joyous conclusion. Yeah! Come back to me, Esma Potts, flower of the moon. Would that I could pluck you again. Davy Jones, take me. Me world be hellfire. For most of the parties concerned.
Thank <laughs> you.